Hello. In this video, we're going to look at the history of Bristol docks in the early modern period by me, Mr. Kennett. I'm going to take quite a loose definition of the early modern period, and we're going to look at the 16th, 17th and 18th centuries. But first, a quick recap. Bristol, in the Middle Ages, was founded by a bridge. It's called Brig Stow originally, the place by the bridge. And as a result of that bridge and that settlement growing, the port developed on the River Avon. And in the 1240s, that port and that docks developed even more when Bristolians extended the docks with St Augustine's Reach. Into the 16th century, and really, things aren't changing a huge amount. Bristol is still, to an extent, trading with France, although a little bit less. It's massively trading, though, still, with Portugal and Spain. And in a similar way that it was before, Bristol is trading an awful lot of wine. Now, in the Middle Ages, if you remember back to the last video, Bristolians were also trading cloth. But in this 16th century, actually, that cloth trade dies from Bristol because London gets the monopoly on the train trade, meaning only Londoners can trade cloth. This leaves Bristol merchants with a bit of a problem. They can try and legally trade the goods that they're allowed to trade, or they can be a bit creative. And actually, Bristol merchants are creative in this period, and they start smuggling. In other words, they start trading illegally on a quite massive scale. And they are trading some cloth, but more importantly, they're trading lead and metal goods from the Mendip Hills south of Bristol. And literally everyone is smuggling, including the mayor, the sheriffs of the town. So all the top people in the city are all smuggling, including John Smythe, who will eventually buy Ashton Court Estate here and build up that house. Bristol, as a result of all that smuggling, actually does pretty well. And in the 16th century, it grows. And the town expands south of the River Avon into Redcliffe. And it's growing and growing and growing. This takes us neatly into the 17th century. And the 17th century is definitely a period of change in Bristol. Although Bristol is still really importantly trading with Spain and Portugal and Ireland still, things begin to change in the 1640s. And in the 1640s in England, there is a civil war. That civil war means that the castle in Bristol is burned to the ground and the town expands as a result. But more importantly, it changes who is trading what. Before the Civil War, London only was trading with the Americas. That changes after the Civil War. And Bristol boats start trading quite heavily with the Americas. And some historians, like Dr Richard Stone from Bristol University, call this a revolution in the docks. A revolution in trade in Bristol. And Bristol merchants are going over to the Americas, which is now the area that we would call the USA and the area that we would now call the Caribbean. And over in the USA, and more importantly in the Caribbean, Bristol merchants are going across the Atlantic and are taking back tobacco and sugar. And that tobacco and sugar are very, very expensive products. They're highly fashionable at the time and they bring an immense amount of wealth into the city. A huge amount of wealth that enables the city to grow even more. And Bristol at this time is really having a little bit of a mini boom. At the same time that they're starting to trade with West Af with the Americas, Bristol also for the first time trades with West Africa. It's doing this slightly illegally again because at this time, only London is allowed to trade with West Africa. But Bristol merchants on the sly are going down to West Africa and taking an immense amount of lead and metal goods and selling them on. 
there is also a tiny bit of trading with slaves at this point. It's still at this point very, very small amount though, because only London was really allowed to trade with slaves. The 1690s though bring a huge change. A huge change. Because that monopoly that London has over the slave trade goes. And Edward Colston comes to the city and encourages Bristol merchants to start getting involved in the slave trade. Now let's zoom out and let's look at what the slave trade was. So here we are with our world map. And this is where Bristol is in the southwest of the UK. And Bristol merchants started getting involved in the slave trade. Now to understand the slave trade you really need to understand where the routes were and what was being traded. So firstly Bristol merchants were going down to West Africa here and in West Africa they were taking products which West Africans at this time did not have. So they were taking lead, guns and metal goods, pots, pans, guns, metal stuff. In West Africa the Bristol merchants were swapping those products for human beings and this is really quite awful and they were swapping them for enslaved people so enslaved people from West Africa were then being taken over to the Caribbean so on this leg of the journey that we sometimes call the middle passage this is where they were taking enslaved people and they were taking those enslaved people to work here on plantations and those people here on the plantations were making goods that were then taken back to Bristol and those goods were funnily enough goods that brought a lot of value tobacco sugar rum now this made Bristol merchants incredibly uh, rich and incredibly profitable but at a massive cost and a huge cost in the 18th century, it is estimated that there were about 2,000 journeys of Bristol boats alone. And really importantly, here, Bristol merchants took over half a million enslaved Africans to work in the plantations here. So there was an immense amount of profit coming into the city, but at an awful, awful cost. Let's go back to Bristol. And Bristol in the 18th century, as a result of that trade, is genuinely booming. And more and more ships are coming into the city. And more and more of those ships are trading in the goods from the slave trade. So they're taking lead out of the city and metal goods. And they're bringing back into the city tobacco and sugar at a vast scale. A vast scale. The profits from this trade were huge and they definitely mean more development in the city and this is where your fancy Georgian buildings start popping up in Bristol. In particular in Queen Square, in the houses that sit above the docks in Redcliffe and on the hill in Park Street and some really really famous Bristol merchants like John Pinney who lives up here in Park Street, make an immense amount of money from a trade that really is at the cost of human beings in a quite awful way. And that is the story of Bristol in the early modern period.